what it do. What up, culture nights? So just in case y'all ain't know, everybody that taps in a black culture to break down are called culture nights. All right? Yeah. So get into it. That's the name. So what up, culture nights? We back. It's your boy Jersey, and we got a brand new episode of Black Culture to break down every Sunday at 10:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 7:30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you on the West Coast. Yes. All right. So this is what I need y'all to do. Tell everybody to pull up on this live right now by sharing right now. All right, we are an Instagram live show with infectious vibes, breaking down music, movies, politics, and everything culture. Yes. So let's get into this show. All right, we got a lot going on today. Today is called Perception versus Reality, and we got a lot of dope people in the building tonight. Yes. So we're about to be in that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so if y'all haven't started sharing the live, this is the time that you start to do that. Yes. Okay. So go ahead and start sharing the live out. So we got a lot of dope people in the crib. We got Dr. Keys, all right, in the house tonight. Yes. Okay. We're talking about a lot of dope topics. Get into that. We got Mr. James DuBose in the building tonight. Yes. All right. That's the general manager for Fox Soul. Get into that. All right. And last but not least, we got Mr. Raz B, who is one of the members of the hit group, B2K, Platinum Selling Group B2K. Yes. All right, so it's about to be all the way turned up tonight. I hope y'all are enjoying your Sunday. Please grab something to drink. I'm already drinking something nice and chill, though, okay? Because it's a professional show, all right? Yes. <laughs> so let's get Dr. Keys on here and let's get the conversation started. But what is up, everybody? Let's see who's in here. Um, I'm just 130, 1031. What up? I see you, bro. David, you're Gail. What up? I see you. Dr. Keys is in here early. Perfect. So let's get the conversation rolling, Dr. Keys. Let's get you on here. But anyways, y'all, happy Saturday. How about that? Right, there you go. Hey, hey, what's up? What up, Dr. Keys? Hey, hey. Dude, I love the music. The intro music was bumping. Uh, but man. <laughs> yes, that's the Black Culture to Breakdown theme song, bro. So it's gonna be on every Sunday. So definitely get into that track. All right, I need to nice. get Spotify. But man, welcome back to Black Culture to Breakdown, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So before we even get into this, tell everybody who you are and what you do. For sure. So I'm Dr. Keys. Uh, I am a celebrity plastic surgery fellow. Uh, and I break down celebrity before and afters on my page, Celebrity Plastics, which is my brand. Uh, and I also showcase before and afters by plastic surgeons from all across the world. Okay. Yes. So if you ain't hear what he just did, get into it. <laughs> all right. So now let's get into this, Dr. Keys. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that's really going on in the media and something that I actually want to touch base on. Today's episode is called perception versus reality. So I want to tap into this conversation of body dysmorphia. Uh, okay. So could we actually just tap into that? Could we explain to the viewers in the quickest way possible what body dysmorphia is? Sure. So body dysmorphia is basically a, a psychological disorder that's characterized by preoccupation with non-existent or perceived flaws about one's appearance. And these uh, preoccupation can cause a lot of uh, discomfort for the patient. They're always perseverating about these flaws, and it can cause a lot of distress in their lives. Got it. So now, with body dysmorphia, let's let's talk about what are the earliest age that people start seeing signs of body dysmorphia that, that we should be recognizing? So it typically doesn't start off until at least the adolescence, and it kind of you know, you typically have symptoms by the time you're 18, but it's not like a sudden onset thing. Uh, it, it typically builds up over time. And, you know, part of it may be hereditary, but a lot of it is environmental. Got you. So now let's tap into the actual plastic surgery of it all. So at what case or what scenario does it get extreme that people start to say, all right, I think I want to go under the knife to start correcting what they deemed as disproportionate to their bodies so you know as far as the patient population who get cosmetic surgery body dysmorphia has a higher prevalence so there are a lot of people with body dysmorphia who seek out plastic surgery just because they want these flaws to be fixed 
but it's something that we as plastic surgeons have to be very careful about because we have to make sure that we can give a satisfactory result. And so we don't want to operate on someone who has these like almost imperceivable like flaws about themselves. And then we operate on them and then they are still unsatisfied and then they can be a very unhappy patient. And then that can cause a lot of distress between a patient and also the provider. And so some of the signs that you look out for are people who are always preoccupied with the mirror or who people who are, um, avoid social settings because they feel like people are always staring at their, their perceived flaw. Um, you know, people who are really expressed like depression about uh, these uh, body image issues. And so these are the types of people that we want to kind of screen out and steer them away from surgery. Got you. So now bring us and not even let's go a little bit deeper into that. At what point do you know, like, all right, it, <clears throat> elective versus cosmetic, right? Or mm -hmm. Is it reconstructive versus cosmetic, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get into that. So now when somebody's actually trying to make a change because they feel like it's going to make their lifestyle better, you know what I'm saying? Versus when someone already made a change and they want to go back and change it again and change mm -hmm. it again. At what point does it become um, compulsive and what is the difference? That's a phenomenal question. So, you know, reconstructive versus cosmetic. So reconstructive for me is when you want to, fix a functional problem. And so we can use like breasts as, a, as an example. So a lot of patients seek breast reduction because their breasts are too big. Gotcha. And so, you know, if we want to cover it from a reconstructive standpoint, then the patient has to prove that the large breasts are causing a, like a detriment to their life. And so um, I've had patients who have rashes that develop under their breast fold. Um, they can have upper back problems. Or even I've had patients that had such large breasts that when they, whenever they cooked on the oven, they would actually burn their breasts on the oven uh, because they were so large. And so we would see that as doctors and say, all right, this is a functional <laughs> problem. And so we need to do a breast reduction so that she doesn't get hurt. God. Versus someone else who's like, all right, these double Ds, I get a lot of people staring at them and I feel uncomfortable. And so I want to go down to a B because I just don't want people to look at me and I think smaller breasts look better. And so that's an aesthetic or cosmetic issue and they would get paid and reimbursed differently. Got you. Okay. So now let's get into these celebrities that we obviously know get a lot of plastic surgery done, but I want to, I want to ask you your professional opinion. Do you think a lot of celebrities have a case of body dysmorphia? Um, so that's hard to determine without talking to them and really getting a good assessment. You know, body dysmorphia should typically be diagnosed by a psychiatrist. Um, but there are screening tools that you can do to really see if you have body dysmorphia. But anyways, to answer your question, you know, I think celebrities who get constant surgeries are constantly, you know, getting larger breasts and they keep, you know, getting larger and larger those patients may, those celebrities may have body dysmorphia because they keep going under the knife instead of just getting one and done and being happy with the result. You know, if you have a complication and you get a reoperation, that's understandable. But if you're getting multiple operations on the same body part, then those are kind of signs that point towards some sort of body dysmorphia. Hmm. Well, Dr. Keys, you definitely broke that down and it was all for free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and listen, I definitely feel like I have way more of a grasp of what body dysmorphia is. And I feel like that was something that we had to touch on because social media can warp what people actually deemed as, oh, they just woke up like that. And it's not necessarily the case. So I feel like the generation is kind of has a wood pulled over their eyes a little bit. But that's why we got people like you to definitely pull the wool over <laughs> so we can... <laughs> on and understand so now what are your final your final thoughts and anything else that we should know about body dysmorphia so you brought up a great point i think body dysmorphia is on the rise because especially young women are being subjected to all these you know perfect images on, on platforms such as instagram where not only do you have you know people who undergo plastic surgery to look better or non-invasive treatments like botox and fillers 
We also have like Photoshop or Facetune that can also make someone look better than they really are in real life. And so, you know, young girls may not realize that. Uh, and so they, there's a lot of body dysmorphia or self-esteem issues that are developing and we're starting to see that. And so it'd be interesting to see, you know, 10, 20 years down the road uh, when these patients are of age to get surgery, whether there's going to be a huge uptick in um, body dysmorphic patients. So we'll it, see. Absolutely. And, and, and definitely in closing, I definitely think that this is the start of the new wave, a new generation that's going to now catch on to whatever it is put in the, the forefront now. So I'm curious to see what the next five and 10 years is going to look like and how plastic surgery will morph through the generations. But Dr. Keith, thanks again for coming on, bro. You are a gem, of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to the rest of your show, man. Of course, man. We'll talk soon, Dr. Keys. All right. Good night. Later. So, if you're tapping in right now, everybody, that was Dr. Keys, all right? Celebrity plastic surgeon fellow. Get into that. <coughs> okay? He gets into everything plastic surgery. Follow his page. He actually taps into what brow lifts, what they cost, who's doing them, who's putting the wool over your eyes. That's what he does, all right? He ain't the exposed king, but he, he kind of like the exposed king. All right? Yes. Yeah. Well, right, let's get into this conversation, though. Next topic. We actually got Mr. James DuBose on here, general manager of Fox Soul. So let's get him on the live and let's get the conversation rolling. But how is everybody doing up in her tonight? All right. Um, Instagram. This is not what we're doing today, okay? Um, Mr. DuBose, we're about to get you on here right now. Um, if Instagram will act like it does. Mr. DuBose, can you actually send a request? Um, yeah, so we can actually get you on here because Instagram is not showing me that I can actually grab you. So please send a request. But if y'all are tapping in, everybody, please hit that arrow and send this live out to all your friends. Yes. <laughs> all right. And now, if y'all not sure what's really going on right here, we are definitely having black culture to break down. And it happens at 1030 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on my Instagram live. All right. Yes. Now, we're about to get Mr. James on here. Um... But I don't know what's the James. Do you see? I are you able to? Are you on the loud, James? In the meantime, what y'all drink? Ah, oh, there you go. What y'all drinking on? In the meantime, let me know. What up? I see y'all in the comments. How y'all feeling? Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, how are you? What's going on, man? I'm good. How you doing? Great. I'm great. Welcome to Black Culture The Breakdown. Uh, uh, thanks for having me, bro. Thank of course, you. Of course. Tell, so tell the people who you are and what you do. Uh, James DeVos, general manager of the new streaming channel, Fox Soul, for, for Black Culture. Um, we'll, we'll be two years old this January coming up. This Fox's first, um, what they call over the top, OTT digital streaming channel. So we're on um, YouTube TV, Samsung TV, Roku, Fox Now, everywhere that you go and consume your your content, you can find us right now. So we're blessed to do that. Bro. Okay. Yes. All right. Better get, get into Fox. So, uh, man, before we even get all the way there, let's walk the people back to the beginning because I feel like um, what you've been able to accomplish has been quite remarkable, especially for Black people in the pandemic. Um, Fox O has definitely been, for me, uh, something that I consume on a definitely day-to-day -day basis. So, but before we get over there, let's walk back to the beginning of how you even got on that journey. How did you even get into the game? Let's bring it back. Uh, thank you, bro. Well, you know, I started, um, uh, it's my, I have my degree in. It's all I've ever known, really, is creative and, 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 and entertainment, quite honestly. But I, I come from a sports background. So I went to Wake Forest University on a, on a football scholarship and then was uh, picked up by the Detroit Lions as a free agent. That didn't work out. So after that, I didn't have no choice but to, but to uh, put my degree to use. The grace of God, man, it all worked out, worked hard. Um, it's a roller coaster ride, you know, up and down. But... Uh, I think in 2005, 2006, I started my own company on the Duos Entertainment. And my first join out the, out the gate was the Keisha Cole, The Way It Is Project. And then from there, um, everything just seemed to start to hit. 
probably too, not probably, definitely too fast for me at the time. You know, we did Tiny and Toya, Monica, Trey Songs, Mike Vick, uh, Toya Family Fair, Hell Day, Comic View, so forth. Kevin, Kevin Hart's one mic stand. Uh, yeah. so, you know, been blessed to do a lot of do a lot of things over the years, man, especially for the culture. Definitely, man, definitely. And, and a lot of those shows that you just mentioned are definitely classics. So, you know, so congratulations just putting out just dope. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Uh, so now, bringing it back, because I know you had a, a both music group. So yeah. before you get into the, the, the TV side of things, tell us about the, the music side. Well, first of all, that's probably one of the dumbest decisions I've ever made in my life, right? <laughs> is to is to try to venture into it was it was during a time, um, quite honestly, brother, my journey was I was having so much success at the T V thing, um, but I was dealing with some internal issues as well that I, it was never enough. So the more I got, the more depressed and miserable I became, quite honestly, right? Um and so I was just trying to find my way, trying to do anything I could to find, fill that void and try to find what was wrong because I had really no idea. So I started a sports agency, Dubois Music Group, uh, various businesses, and none of them worked out, right? <laughs> just, to, just to be clear. But I, I say that to say on this thing because the idea is a lot of people look at where I am now or where anyone like me, if you will, and think that it's just all good, right? Everything is great and, and and you must be winning if you will. But that that was a long journey for me, bro, to get here where I almost wasn't here. Um, and so I had to take that out of this entertainment world and not let, I don't even want to say the success. It's, 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 it's like, I used to think the success brought my gifts, <laughs> but then you start to realize it's the gifts that brought your success. So when things went left and went foul, for a while, yes. it was really, really bad. But I realized that as long as I had my gift that I was blessed with, that I could always get back to where I, where I was. Bro. Absolutely, man. So now, man, that was that's a dope story. But what made you feel like it was a dumb decision, though, to get into music? Did you feel like maybe you just went in as you were on the TV side? Or and it's something that you could still try again and maybe be successful at? Or are you just not happening? Right, no, no, I love music. I don't want to say it like that, like like it was a bad thing. It's just I wasn't the right person at the time to, to venture into it. Um, you know, my, my goal from day one, brothers, I wanted to really build a Black DreamWorks. I wanted to do film, TV, and music all under one banner because I love it all. I'm a passionate about it all, right? And I'm not giving up on it. It's just that I needed to go through that um, to really understand my role in it and what I what I could do and really learn some valuable lessons from it. So I, I definitely uh, plan on getting back into not just the music space, but continuing to while I'm on this earth is to continue to build my dreams of the Black Dream work. But I had to work on myself first in order to be accomplished. So that that's why it didn't work out. It's just it, it was it was personal as opposed to um, anything the business wise. I just was it just wasn't right for me to do it at the time. All right. So, man, but I, I already know it seemed like you're going to circle back around because <laughs> yeah. like it's already built up. It's just not what's right. So now right. let's move on to how you actually became a producer, right? So mm -hmm. now what was like your first like, oh, I actually just first producer job. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I started like 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 most of us, a PA, a gopher, going to get lunch. I knew that wasn't for me, you know. Uh, I'm not, but but I'm grateful for it. But the, my, I guess my very first one that was a show called Season of the Tiger that BET was doing. I think it was 2005, 2004, something like that. Um, and it wasn't working out the way they wanted it to, so I had to beg them to let me do it. Like they didn't know. Well, I, I had finished a show called Blind Date. I was doing things for other companies. And I, this story is, I had to literally call uh, PT, the, the presidents and executives at the time that was there, to beg them to allow me so they could see my work. They did it. Um, and after that, we were able to turn that around. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then again, the very next thing was the Keisha Cole project. And then everything just went from there. So I always knew from day one, I wanted to tell our stories, right? Um, and if you look at my body of work, Everything that I've ever done 
is not necessarily the celebrity phase, but it was it was bringing them out of a difficult part of their journey that they was in um, when I started off. You know, if you look at Tiny and Toy, for instance, they were known, they were more known or identified by the men they were associated with as opposed to their own identity. Um, so, and through that, through all the shows I've done, I was able to tell a little bit of my story through their story because there was some connections there. And I think that's what it made it a little more real. We always wanted to be authentic. Um, and in order to do that, you got to have a trust factor, right? So you can't just say, I'm a producer. I'm going to go out and produce these shows, especially when celebrities are putting their, their, their brands in your hand. You have to, t you, have to you know, um, be very careful with that. So through all that process, man, it's just I always knew I wanted to tell our stories for our people and provide something that hopefully when I'm dead and gone um, will still serve the community and the culture for a long time. Yes, absolutely, man. So now you just said you, you, you were able to connect so many celebrities that put their brands, you know, like pretty much in your hand. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So talk to us about these shows, man. TGIF, Cocktails with Queens, The Mix, um, and all of these different celebrities you were able to kind of pull together, black celebrities, to be a part of the network. Um, how were you able to make those connections and bring them all to your platform? A lot of them, for the most part, it was already relationships that I had. But, but to be honest with you, my passion for what I was doing, my passion for this thing that was authentic for the culture and telling my story of what I have been through, it was, it's relationships, man. And that's the beauty part. Like, I don't want to say it's something I've done special or anything like that. It's just a lot of people wanted to see me win with this thing, you know? And so they gave up a lot of what they normally would ask for, if you will, be it financially, time, or what have you to say, Jay, I'm coming over and I'm going, I want to help you be a part of this thing. So I had a vision and I, and I had passion for what I wanted to do. And I knew starting off this, this, this space was going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. Um, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm blessed to have the people that you see and the people that you don't see <clears throat> really believe in the vision and, and, and the passion and my circle of friends now that have helped me along the way. Um, so it's really relationships, and that's what I tell anybody, man. It's relationships and being genuine and authentic to the people that are helping you as well. I'll never forget them. Absolutely, man. Yes, oh, man. You dropping gems, and you ain't charging nobody tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so definitely, that's happening right now. We are here on Black Culture to Break Down. We are tapping in with James Bowes, general manager of Fox Soul. So make sure y'all definitely tapping in. Uh, so now, let me ask you this. What is the goal for Fox Soul? Right. Well, when you initially started it, you said you wanted mm -hmm. to be able to pull music, and all of the all the elements acting, all that stuff together. Right. Now, what's the goal? What's the final picture look like? Right. So to start off. The mission was to to provide a safe place that that about the things we normally only talked about in the privacy of our own homes that we can come and really open up and talk to, build a community, not just a broadcast network. Because to be honest, it's, it's gonna it was gonna be hard to compete with. At the digital channel, you're hard to compete with people that are 40 years, 15 years ahead of you, the BTs, the revolts, the TV ones, and so forth. So what was going to be different? And the difference was giving the people actually the voice to be a part of the program where you can live and interactive, you can interact with the hosts, and they get real-time feedback. Hmm. Moving forward, you know, I want to be able to touch everything that our community touches. Um, you know, we have talk shows now that was very important to start off with. But now we're getting into, I, I need to get into the sports world to the fashion world, to the music world, uh, because I feel like everything, we, we make what's hot, hot. Our culture, when we say it's hot, it's hot. And and, and so I want to tap in. Yes. That. And I have a lot of great people that have been rocking with me for years. They've been like, when's my turn? But I have a lot of, you know, my next thing is the big sports thing that's coming down the pike. I have somebody that's been on deck with me for a while with that, um, fashion shows, and then the music, right? And then eventually get into hopefully scripted and movies and so forth. Um, but the, the the main thing is keep doing strategic partnerships with other black media companies because the, the thing is this is strictly for us by us and I want to be able to work together with everybody that I can lift as as I climb if you will. Absolutely, man. Yes, and definitely in the money with the way that you think and you definitely understand the the, the concept of working together because that's definitely the way United we for. You know, I, I used to go to the film festival, ABFF, a lot. My, I have a dance school in Brooklyn used mm. to, um, by one of their sponsors. I go to ABFF. Um, and that's where I actually got a chance to see 
people kind of come together to kind of put something together. So this reminds me a lot of like an ABSF kind of vibe um, with people just coming to share share their work and it's excellent. Um, yeah. Definitely. So now I know you have Miss Vivica A. Fox on the network as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so where you where she looks over films. Um, right. It's right. like that. Um, you have so many shows on the network. Talk to us about which one is your favorite show on the network. How about that? Yeah, uh, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> they all my favorite, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't do that. They all my favorite. But you know what, honestly, um, I would say you mentioned Vivica A. Fox, Fox Soul Screening Room. I mean, there are. Uh, that's probably I would say my favorite because it really gives young black creators the opportunity to see their work, to have their work seen by the world. Like, I don't know, it ain't a long process. You don't have to go through the traditional green light process. We're, that is our mission from HBCUs to everybody that normally haven't had an opportunity to feel like they could be a part of this business in a real way. Um, that show gives them that, that opportunity. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, I love Vivica for being so so open to doing that. And we've gotten such great feedback from the public because they're like, I never thought I could talk to a, someone like a Vivica A. Fox or myself or whoever the case may be. But most importantly, is to get their product shown. Um, so, so I'm very proud of that. And, 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 and like people like yourself, right? Like this is, I appreciate you thinking enough of me to have me on your show, but I think enough of you that I want to be here tonight as well. So that's kudos to you, brother. So, so, so continue what you're doing as well. Appreciate that, man. Thank you, man. You know? The whole pandemic, I was inspired by out of content that you guys were pumping. And so it's it's a definitely an honor to have you on here. And I mean, I, I get off and watch TGIF and cocktails. Yeah. Watch all of them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Too, because I definitely feel like we gotta support black creators that's putting the work out. Um, especially when it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so we definitely yeah, thank you. Uh so now let me ask you. How important, you mentioned relationships. Mm -hmm. How important for anybody that's trying to get into the game in entertainment, no matter on what spectrum, a producer, a writer, whatever, they want to be a content creator. How important is it to cultivate relationships? Um, and, and, and how important is it to still be talented in this day and age, 2021, to still be talented? How important are those two and how do they work? Well, first of all, relationships is key in any part of life. Like, there's people when you go through troubles that's going to help you that you would never thought help you. I, I have a few great, great people that have helped me along the way because of the relationships, right? Um, so you cannot get around having genuine relationships, and that is the key to life, period. Uh, and not everybody's going to be genuine. Not every relationship is going to be genuine. But when you find that circle, keep that circle tight and small and consistent, and make sure it becomes a win-win where it's not a one-way street. They're only giving to you and you're not giving nothing back. Learn how to deposit, not just withdraw in the relationship. So that, that's, that's very yes. important, right? Um, but in terms of being talent, it's, it's, it's definitely talent. But you also got to remember, I tell people all the time, don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you. You know what I mean? There's a lot of talented people out there. But then when they get there, they lose their way. They lose themselves. I've been a part of that myself. Um, so you definitely got to be talented and passionate because when this, this business is meant to break you down and to make you quit and to make you stop. And if you really love what you do, most importantly, and you, um, you just got to keep going, man. I tell there's no right way. There's no wrong way. There's no certain path. I could tell anybody to do this, do that. Cause our, all our paths is different. All I could tell you is stay the course. Don't quit. And, 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 and stop jumping around. If that ain't working out for you, let me go be a writer today. And then that ain't working out. Let me go be a producer tomorrow. And then let me go do an actor the next day because everything is difficult. And, 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 and you know, a mentor of mine used to tell me, if you're tired of starting over, stop quitting. Just keep going. You know what I mean? And so that, that's what I tell people. Yes. Sound is very important, but nothing is more important than genuine relationships and making sure it's a two-way street. Dope, man. That's definitely something I think a lot of people need to hear because a lot of times people will be like, why are you not trying to help me? Oh, because it becomes just one dimensional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely think it's, would you say always a deposit, not a withdrawal, would you say? Yeah, yeah, you gotta learn the deposit, not just withdraw. You know, a lot of times when I say lift as we climb, but I tell people also as I'm climbing, 
if you can't do nothing at the moment, at least push me. Don't try to drag me down because you ain't there yet. You understand? I can't lift if I can't climb and lift if you're pulling me down. So that's the type of relationships I'm talking about. Even when people ain't where they want to be in terms of the business yet, if you will, they're still they still got the wherewithal to push you um, because they believe the fact that when you get to where you are, you will continue to to to, to lift them as well, man. And, and again, that goes back to to the relationships. Um, and, and that's my goal every day is to try to go on a genuine relationships and and have a lot of discernment in between what is real and what isn't. Dope, man. Dope, dope. All right, so now let me ask you this. What is next for Fox Soul? And then after that, what's next for James? Um, Fox Soul, all I can say is the growth, man. Like, we went from, again, I think, turning to January 13th of next year and what we've been blessed to be able to accomplish in a short period of time is, is phenomenal. It's nowhere close to where we want to be at. Any startup business, you know, the, the idea is to become profitable, <laughs> which we're starting to, to, to get to that point. Um, but I, I want to be on every TV. I honestly want to be the premium black place where people go for black content and not just black content, but I want to turn Fox Soul and what I thought the music business did for hip hop. It started in the hood. It was for us. It was by us. Nobody thought it was going to last. But now everybody appreciates our stories because for the most part, they're real and authentic. And that is what the programming and the voices I'm trying to bring to Fox Soul. In terms of James, myself, I'm single and focused on Fox Soul, man. Like, I feel like God, after everything in life, God put me here for a purpose, not just for myself, but really for the culture, really for the community. So, I don't think about nothing else, but this day in and day out, I li this is really what I, I thank God for every day to be able to do this, man. So that that's all you're gonna hear from me. It's Fox Soul across the board. That that's all it is. Across the board, man. That's 100 percent facts. Yes. Yeah. So, man, you've been able to accomplish a lot, and I feel like a lot of people have tried and have not been able to succeed. So the fact that you're still standing and we here now and you have all these people that are involved that are prominent it's definitely a testimony that's going to be here five years from now you know what i'm saying thank, thank, thank you man I, i've had more losses than wins but all it takes is one win you know what i mean yeah. mother, but so so yeah. that's why i tell people to stay the course bro because you will experience some losses in life as you learn and go through it 100 percent facts all right so we're gonna play a quick game before we get you off of here is that cool with all you right. that's cool <laughs> It's called Rapid Fire. So I'm just going to ask you questions and you're going to answer with whatever the first thing that comes to your head. All right? It's probably going to be like questions. Cool? All right. All right. So let's get into it. What is your dream show to work on? That's, I have, man, that's a tough one because that's a tough one, man. That's, that's a my dream show. <clears throat> Actually, would love to see the process. If I had one show to do before I get off this earth, I would love to do a scripted show about the real process of how businesses in the black community really get started. I.e., imagine if we had. I know it's a rapid fire, but I gotta, I gotta go. There. I'm sorry about that. But imagine if we had tape or, or, or footage of when Bad Boy first got started or, or Rock Nation got started, all the uh, um, murdering, all the things that, that will be a part of our culture forever <clears throat> to really see that process because we only saw the ending, the success of it, <clears throat> but not the process. And I just feel like that's just intriguing when we watch these biopics. BMF is out right now. It's because we're seeing it from the beginning of it. And I just think that's so important. So my, so my, so, so my ultimate project would be to be able to show from the beginning to the end and actually see people that uh, show people what it, what it was like to really build something successful from a black mind. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't answer. Sorry about that. It's all. That's a lot of. Them. <laughs> I, who, what's the number one rated show on Fox? So we don't get traditional ratings like that because the streaming services, <laughs> but I would have to say probably TGIF is the, is the, is the, it's the most watched show right now. Okay, TJ. But it's a cl it's a close second with 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 with, with Queens cocktails with the Queens. Very close second. Yeah. The most watched show right now. Dope, dope. Okay. Um, who's your most fun cast to work with? 
Well, I, just to be clear, I don't work with them day in and day out. They have producer teams that deal with them on a the day in and day out. So I, I, that's hard to answer because I don't really work with the cast like that once we do the deals and get them going and figure out what the show is. Um, but everybody's cool, man, because it's just to be able to go and talk to us and, and work with us and see faces like us. It's a beautiful thing, man. So I, I, I love it all. I love every reporter. I love everybody that's on the network. I love it. Behind the scenes and in front of the camera, I love it all. Okay, okay, dope, dope, dope. All right. Um, is there a secret show that we got that you got coming up that we should be? Yes, but I'm gonna keep it a secret. <laughs> well, I, I'm telling you, 2022 though, you gonna see Fox O at a completely different level that they never thought it was coming for 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 year two. Year I'll, two. I will say that we're gonna be into doing everything that that I had the vision for. Thank God. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Two more questions. Um, do you predict that Fox so will have an app within the next couple of months? An app? Yes. We have an app now. You can call. You can go on your uh, Apple or Android, whatever. It's Fox Soul. You can download it, watch everything. We like. It, we have an app. We started off with that, and now we've grown to all these where you could sit at home and watch on your on your big screen as well. No, we have an app. So. Okay. It's going to get better, though. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, shoot. All right. There we go. You already got an app. All right. Last one. Um, is there any show that you feel like is not currently working? You don't have to say what it is, but do you feel like there's a show that's not currently working? Um, no, nah, it's, all, it's all working, but every show could get better. God, okay. Every show could get better. Yes. I could be, I could be better. Um, and that's the beauty of this, what I call a beautiful struggle, is that we're learning every day. So every show could be better from top to bottom, starting with myself. Got you. Super dope, man. Uh, James, man, you definitely came on here and, and fired us and definitely gave us the, the, the whole breakdown on Fox Soul. So we appreciate you. Thank um, you, brother. Thanks for having me. Breaking it down. Um, let everybody know what you got coming up that we should be on the hook. Um... Well, we're doing so. So, <laughs> please check out Sundays. We have the Sheen Stella TV. We do Stella TV for for a four hour block. You get the greatest Sunday worship and music and so forth that you have. Um, on Saturdays, we have Dame Dash Block, which is which is doing really well for us. Um, so every day, Monday through Friday and Monday through Sunday, you could there's something for everybody. So I just ask the people to support us. Like we won't survive without, without you. We're here for you. Um, and I know you have a lot of choices to make, but give us an opportunity. I think once you start to, to see the content that we have and how we go about our business, um, hopefully to become a destination spot for you and not just a one time or one, or one off kind of deal. So that's the only thing I would say, like, just give it a chance, go download it, go find it on your, whatever app you watch on your big TV or on YouTube TV, whatever Samsung TV plus, just give it a chance, man, and just see real like black people working, like black minds of creating this and doing it from top to bottom in front of the scenes. But like I can't stress that enough. Like it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, man. But we can't do it without the community. And that's that's why we're here. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like people don't give <clears throat> brand new a fair chance? Yeah, I mean I mean it's it's human nature to want to be associated with what's hot. Right, so so that's just who we are. That's just what it is. Um, and let's be clear: it's just if you don't know about us, it's not you can't sit down and turn on channel twelve and, and watch it in linear broadcast television. Um, you know, sometimes it takes a little more effort to go find it. But then when people are finding it, we've grown from from just real quick. And I think we beta launched in October two thousand nineteen with like two hundred thousand views. You know, viewers. And to this day, not being two years old yet, we're over 70 million. Dope. So Dope. We, we, we definitely are growing and people are really finding us and really enjoying what, what they're saying. So I don't know if, I don't want to say people don't give us a chance. It's that people don't want to take the time <laughs> to go and find it unless their circle is saying it's hot because they don't want to be left out. They don't want to feel like they don't know what the next hot thing is. So, so uh, you know, we try to keep it authentic. 
Um, we don't want to be a fad or a trend or a wave. We want to be consistent with our message and what we're doing and with the voices we have so that when you come, you have some sustainability. Absolutely. So now, if, there's a, if there was one sector that people wouldn't know that you guys get a lot of traffic from, which, you know, out of Instagram and YouTube, the app, where's, where's the market that, that people should? I mean, YouTube for us is huge. It's really huge. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's really, really huge. Um, across the board, Zumo, Samsung TV, YouTube TV, Roku, Tubi, Fox Now. Like, because a little bit of everybody, depending on the age demo, watches their place in different ways. But, but I will say, you know, you know what's, what's, what's crazy is a lot of people that are not of the culture are starting to watch this now and pay attention. <laughs> That, that says they're starting to respect our voice, starting to respect our stories and what we do. You know, we have our black, we have a show, The Black Report, which is our daily black news show. All the news is about black people, what we're doing, how we, it ain't just sad news either. They're killing us or they're shooting us. We report the news, but we also do Young, Gifted, and Black segment of the news. We do HBCU. So we're showing the totality of, of, of our culture and not just a small portion of it that you would find on traditional television. Got you. Dope, dope. I, think, well, I feel like you're a part of a new revolution, man, that's actually going to start a whole bunch of different trends. So I... God willing. Nah, it's already happening. They see so many attempting um, to do what you guys are already successful. So it's just a matter of just, you know, seeing what you're Fox out of here. Thank you, bro. And we see that. Well, man, thanks again for coming on, and we definitely appreciate you. Let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah, I mean, you find me personally. I'm only on one social media. That's at Duvos Official on IG. But follow at Fox Soul. Um, look up Fox Soul. And that's where you, wherever you see the work. I like the work to speak for me. And let me say, brother, you keep doing what you're doing as well. Congratulations to you. Anything we can do to help you continue your climb, we're here for that. That's what we're about. Appreciate that, man. Of course, we'll definitely talk soon. You ain't going to be a stranger. We'll have you back. Absolutely. Catch up. Right. All right God man. bless you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate All right. it. All right. All right. Good night. So that was James DeBose. Just in case I didn't know, general manager of Fox Soul. Okay. Yes. Definitely gets to the bag, definitely gets to the programming, and definitely understands what it is to put out good content. Yes. All right. If y'all don't subscribe, or if y'all have not subscribed, if y'all haven't even seen Fox Soul, definitely tap in. It's on YouTube. Um, they got some of your favorite celebrities on there literally right now, either being interviewed or, you know, hosting different shows on there. So definitely tap into that platform. All right? Yes. So now we're about to get on to the next segment. Let's see if Mr. Rasby is on the line. Okay, Rasby's not here yet. All right, so if y'all on here, this is what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to go get Raz B. Um, I need y'all to comment on Raz B and let him know he's up. Uh, <laughs> all right? That's what we're going to do in the meantime. But, but make sure y'all get a drink. Let me just text the manager right now and see what's going on. Okay? Well, how y'all feeling, everybody? I hope y'all learning a whole lot because I feel like it's definitely a... a Today's perception versus reality. So we talked about body dysmorphia and pretty much how your brain could be walked into thinking you look a certain way, but you don't. And, and you can go and tap into different surgeries that you don't need to. Um, but if you do need to, make sure you go and see Dr. Keys, okay? Because he got you covered and he won't know what to do. <laughs> All right. But you don't want to be out here doing too much because it's going to make you start to turn your illness into body dysmorphia. Damn. That's not what we want. All right. In the meantime, though, it's, let me see if Raz B's on here. Nope. He's still not on here yet. Raz. Okay. So, what are y'all drinking tonight? What y'all ate for dinner? What's going on? What y'all watching on Netflix? <laughs> Speak. All right. Speak now. Or forever hold your peace. And what, I'm about to, what I'm about to do is probably end the live and then come back home when Raz B is ready. Because he's not on here yet. And I wasn't prepared for this. No. So, <laughs> um, tonight was really, really informative. 
I learned a lot. Mr. James was super dope. What up, Courtney? Um, he said, Jersey got, I got Stella. Okay, got Stella. But James really inspired me. Like, that's the general manager of Fox Soul. Again, if y'all don't know what that platform, he just said 17 million. I don't think it, you know, this is not 7,000 views. <laughs> 70 million is a lot of people tapping in and doing what you're doing. This is relationships at its finest. Um, being able to get people of that caliber to want to come back and give back to your platform is something that is to be commended and recommendable on every account. <laughs> so, shout out to James. And I hope that one day I'm able to come up on Fox Soul and share my gifts on there. Okay? Yes. Um, anyways, now let's move on to what we got planned. And it was supposed to be Raspy. But because right now there is some technical difficulties. Yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode here. And I will be back on when Raspy is on. Don't worry. I will put out another live now so you know to tap back in. But I appreciate y'all for tapping in tonight. I am your boy, Jersey. We'll figure out what's going on. And I'll be back. All right? But I'm going to see y'all later. Deuces. Deuces.